Hey everybody, my name is Mike Shep with the Software Freedom School. Today I'm going to walk you through using KVM on a CentOS 8 workstation. This is an update to an earlier video where I showed you how to do this on CentOS 7. Now that CentOS 8 is out, it's time to update that video. To go through this with me, you'll need CentOS 8 installed on a machine. You can just install CentOS 8 on whatever machine you have, be it a laptop or a desktop, and just use the default workstation environment. That is what I have done here. Also, if you look in the video description, there is a markdown file where I give you notes and general steps that will help you follow along. So let's begin by opening up a terminal. To do so, click the Activities button and then click the terminal. We need to install a couple packages. Let's type sudo dnf install libvirt and vert-manager. Libvert contains all of the packages and everything needed for KVM to run, and Vert Manager is a nice GUI that will make it easier to manage our KVM installation. Go ahead and press enter and type in your password. And we can see it's going to pull in the packages we asked for, Libvert and Vert Manager, and then all of the dependencies needed for them. Type Y and enter and it will download and install all of the packages. Now, with KVM, by default, only the root user can manage system virtual machines. So we need to give our current user permissions to manage those virtual machines. To do that, we just need to add our user to the user group libvirt. So type sudo user mod dash lowercase a uppercase g libvirt and then your username. On this machine, my username is Mike, so I've typed Mike. These parameters here are important. The uppercase G says to add the user to a supplementary group, and the A is for append. If you missed the A, it would replace all of your supplementary groups with only libvert, and if you used a lowercase G, it would actually replace your primary group. So keep in mind these parameters. Press enter, and we don't get anything back, but we can make sure that that worked by typing get ent for get entity, group, and then libvert. We can see there's here the libvert group, and then my user is a member of that. But if we type ID, we don't actually see libvert in that list of groups. We see my primary group, which is Mike, and then a supplementary group called wheel. Wheel is the user group that allows people to have pseudo access, but we're missing the libvert group. So how do we fix that? Well, you just simply log out. You can click here in the upper right corner and then click your username and log out and then log back in. Okay, so now that we're logged back in, let's double check that I'm in the right group open up our terminal again and just type ID. We can now see here's that wheel group again and now here's the libvert group. So let's go ahead and create a virtual machine. I'm going to click the activities button again and start typing vert. We'll see virtual machine manager. That was that vert dash manager package we installed. So let's go ahead and open that. And by default, it automatically connects to your local system. If you wanted to manage KVM on another system, you could add that in here as well. So let's click this icon for creating a new virtual machine. We're going to choose local install media and then browse. I have already downloaded a CentOS 8 installation DVD into my home directory under ISOs. We'll find that. Um, we will see for some reason it's not able to automatically detect our operating system. If we click forward, it's not going to let us go. We, it says you must select an OS. So let's uncheck automatically detect and start typing. So now if I start typing sent for CentOS, for some reason, the latest we see is 6.10. So let's not do that. We know that CentOS is almost identical to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So let's search for that. Here's Red Hat and we can do Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.1 since I have a CentOS 8.1 DVD. And let's go forward. 
It'll warn you it does not have permissions for the path. Let's go ahead and correct this now by clicking yes. And I'll go with the default CPU and memory. And the same thing with the disk. I'm gonna end up choosing a minimal installation for this, so 10 gigabytes is more than plenty. And it wants to name it RHEL 8.1, but this is actually a CentOS box, so we'll just call it CentOS 8.1. And let's click Finish. We can see it's going to go ahead and configure the system. And now we can click into it. The one thing you'll notice right away is it's trapped my mouse pointer. It actually disappeared. If you look in the top bar there, it says press Control L plus Alt L to release pointer. That means it's press the left Control and Alt keys on your keyboard and it will release your pointer. It's actually all the way down here now. Let's click in it and skip the testing media by pressing the up arrow and choose install. So from here, it'll boot up into the CentOS installation and, and I can just go ahead and finish out the installation for this system. So now that this is loaded, we can see that the corner of the setup screen is kind of missing here. So we can actually just click view, resize to VM and it will show us the whole thing. We'll click continue. Um, the first thing you see here is it's got an exclamation point on the installation destination. So let's click that and we'll just go ahead with automatic and everything and click done and that it's going to go away. Let's enable the network, turn on the NIC and for host name, I'm just going to call this test and apply it and click done. And for time and day, we're going to choose the Denver time zone since that's where I'm at. And we can see nothing else is nagging our attention. Oh, I do want to change software selection from server with GUI to minimal installation. That's the minimum amount of packages needed. And click done and click begin installation. So while this is installing, let's go ahead and point out some other things in KVM you can do. If you click the light bulb up here, you can see you have a, you can use this screen to modify all of the hardware on your system. Everything from the CPUs installed to the memory. Up here are your options for controlling the power. So this button would power it on, this pauses it, and then you get more options here. And then this last button here is for snapshots. With this, you can take snapshots before you do something to the system. Say you need, say you want to install Apache on this system. You do something that completely breaks or you want to do it again to make sure you understand how to do that. You can take a snapshot before you install Apache, do whatever you want, break it completely, and then restore back to that snapshot. It's a great functionality for playing around and learning how to do things. We go, let's go back here and see how it's going. It's going to take some time to install this, so I won't bore you with that. You can go ahead and do this on your own. Um, well, that's it. That's all I had for you today. Please let us know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you.